Hello, I'm Martin Fenska and welcome to the first episode of another of my Civilization V Vox Populi series. Uh, so because we have a first episode of a new series, it's going to be more like an introduction. We'll check the mods, go through the map settings, and I'll show you three different starting locations. The, you'll have 24 hours to decide which of them we're going to be using for this series. Last time we tried voting through a poll, which in the end I didn't like that much. Also, it caused a bit of confusion. This time we will return back to voting through comments. Uh... Honestly, I have to say that I just uh, like reading your comments. When it's a poll, I just see a numbers, or, or I would see numbers tomorrow, and that's it. Uh, when you are voting in comments, often you don't write just, I want you to use one, two, or three, but you also add your reasons. And as I said, I just like reading these kinds of comments, so I don't want to take away, or take that away from me. So as I said, uh, once again, we'll be voting through comments. Before we get to all the settings and everything, I would like to return to the last episode of the previous series and answer some comments, because there were some questions about, like, um, uh, if I would be willing to change some mods, and uh, if I would be willing to use some, like, other settings. Where do we start? Um... Uh, Probably the simplest, simplest answer was to the question if I'd be willing to return to Vanilla C5. I have to say no to that. I tried. And, um, well, after playing Vox Populi for thousands of hours, returning to Vanilla, it just feels like going back to like a beta version or incomplete game, uh, something like that. The AI is horrible. Uh, uh, it feels like mechanics are missing there, and uh, yeah, even though I played Vanilla C5 for thousands of hours, I think after playing Vox Populi, there is just no way back. So I'll be sticking with Vox Populi. Same answer is to a question if I would be willing to get rid of Vox and try some other mods that change the game in a similar way. Um, with Vox Populi, I found a mod that basically brings them uh, to the I found the mod that brings to the game everything that I was looking for yeah there are some problems with the mod but um, just a question of some basically minor fixes that hopefully uh, be like or these problems will be fixed uh, with the gold version, which hopefully will be coming soon. At least that's what it looks like after I've read uh, the forum recently. So, yeah, I don't have any reason to, like, get rid of Vox Populi, even try it. And honestly, I just don't want to learn another mod. If I tried a different mod that changes the game as significantly as Vox Populi, I would need quite some time to relearn everything and I just I'm honestly I'm not willing to do that so we'll be sticking to Vox Populi I am willing to add some other mods to Vox, to Vox Populi though uh, from some basic things like modded saves to some like more significant uh, uh, additions I have quite a few suggestions to mods that work with Vox Populi that I could try. I'll probably never do all of that at the same time, but we could switch between mods uh, for every series. <clears throat> but uh, there is one condition. We have to get a gold version of Vox Populi before that. Because I think once we finally get gold, the the developers of the sub mods will have time to catch up and I think it will add some stability to the game. It's uh, always the same issue that I'm talking about when it comes to mods. The more mods I add to the game, the less stable it is. And uh, some, or this is not much of an issue when you are playing like a normal game that you are not recording. But uh, when you know you're going to be recording a series that lasts a month or two, you want to make sure you can finish it. There is nothing worse than recording a series for a month, getting to like 70% of the game and then losing it because of a bug. It just pisses off everyone. It pisses me off because I can't finish the game. It pisses you off because you don't see the, the end of the series, uh, especially if it's a closed game. 
So I think the gold version will bring a bit more stability. So then we can try to be a bit more adventurous with the mods that we're going to be adding to the basic Vox Populi. Okay, what else? So there are some other questions, but don't I don't remember. Okay, let's just go uh, back to this episode and we all check this, the, the, the settings. First of all, mods, we are using Vox Populi. Uh, it's the version from the, I think it's uh, 19th of June, but the one with some hot fixes. So when you, when you are downloading uh, the mod, there are two files. One is, I think, 6. 19 and the other one is 6192. So the, the one with the two in the end, that's the version that I'm using. Uh, and we are also using a third and fourth unique component. And it's the same version that we were using for the previous series. So I hope it won't cause uh, any problems. Uh, but it's the newest version. There were no uh, newer version that I was able to find. So yeah, we'll stick to the version. I think it's 59. Um, there will be links to all these mods in the description of the video. So if you are not sure, just check those links and it will take you to the uh, correct versions of all the mods. And that's that. Now we can check the map settings. So if you watched the last episode of the previous series, you know what we're going to be playing. Uh, we'll be playing as a Portugal trying a diplomatic victory. And because I have like no experience with diplomatic games, I played, I don't know. I think I did two on camera. But in average, for like 20 games that I win, there might be like not even 20, like 40 games that I win. There might be one when I get diplomatic victory. So compared to all the other uh, like victory types, I just have very little experience with diplomatic games. So I don't want to, uh, didn't want to go with something too like uh, unusual when it comes to settings. So it's Portugal on a standard map against, uh, it should be seven to two, four, six, yeah, against seven AIs. We are, or I wanted to use a map where uh, we have a lot of sea tiles. So it's gonna be archipelago. So it should be like medium size islands. That, that's what I was going for. As I said, standard map size, that uh, epic, all of this is basic. I think I changed the sea level to high to take away a little bit more land. <clears throat> so it should be something in between small islands in an archipelago with this setting. And I added four more city-states. I was thinking about adding more, but I think it would be too much. So I decided to go with 20. We'll see how that works. Uh, hopefully there will be enough room on the map for everything. But it's hard to say. I'm not 100% sure what the high level is going to do on this map. Uh, we'll see. I think um, this time the game will look like I want it to look a lot more than last time. Last time we were planning just a, a land map with a lot of cavalry. We ended up with naval warfare. Uh, this time, even though I'm not 100% sure about what some of the settings are going to do exactly, it should be a map that I want. Okay, so that's the settings. And now about the advanced options. There also isn't anything crazy here. Uh, I'm not sure if I let the starting mess uh, available or no, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I disabled event system, no ruins, raging barbarians, transparent diplomacy, no tech trading, tech brokering, no research agreements, just the most basic settings that I'm using for most of my series. Okay, so that's the map settings, and now about the starting locations. 
So, Portugal. Where is Portugal? There. Portugal 1. Oh, one more thing. We also want to talk about uh, Portuguese unique ability and our unique units and everything. Because this time this will actually affect our game quite a bit. But maybe before we check uh, those locations, let's talk about what's unique for Portugal. Okay, Mare Clausum. When a trade unit moves, receive four science, uh, gold, and great admiral points, that's for cargo ships, or great general points for caravans, and it scales with era. This... I'm not sure, but I think it's gonna be just ridiculous. Four isn't that much. But it's scaling with era and it's for one trading unit. So we want to focus on trade as much as possible. And once we get like 10 units running around the map, they'll be generating a lot of science and gold. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think our uh, unique ability is really, really strong as long as we can use it properly and as long as we can protect our trade. This game is going to be a lot about protecting our trade routes. That's probably going to be our like main goal is going to be protect trade routes at all costs and make sure that the AIs don't conquer too many city-states. That will be the goal of the game. As long as we can do that, I think we should win. Um, okay, that was unique. Ability then. I think I'll go with our land, unique land unit because this one is not gonna affect our game too much. And uh, these three actually work together, so I want to talk about them like almost at the same time. Here we have Kokador, which is a replacement for a Gatling gun. Ranged unit of the industrial era, only Portugal may build it wherever it levels up. It gains a random, uh, a random promotion from Trailblazer or Survivalism lines. Started it covering fire one. Um, this just means that uh, this will be a ranged unit with a few... Uh, like scout promotions, which is nice. The Trailblazer line uh, would be great. Problem is, it uh, it's uh, random, so we can't decide which one we take. But overall, I don't think we'll see too many of these guys. Maybe I'll just try them out, a few of them. Uh, we'll probably need some range units for the defense of our cities. But yeah, this is not the map where we would use these guys too much. But the rest, well, that's a different story. Let's start with um, start with our unique uh, caravel replacement. Melee naval unit which excels at sea exploration. Has higher combat strength than the caravel. It can perform an ability when adjacent to city-states to earn gold and experience. This ability is lost on upgrade. May only be built by the Portuguese. Uh, if possible, when now sells its exotic cargo to city-state, Fatoria is automatically created in the territory. And Fatoria, that's our unique tile improvement. So, um, we need to use the power spike when we get Nows as much as possible. Because once we get their upgrades, they will lose their unique ability. Um, the unique ability is that uh, the, the ability to sell the exotic cargo and create those Fatorias, which are pretty powerful and we want to get them everywhere we can. Um, I'm not sure if um, that sell exotic cargo ability is one time thing or if one now can do it like in multiple city states. We'll have to find that out. But it doesn't really matter. We want to build as many of these as possible. We will, or we should have more nows that there will be city-states on the map. So it won't be a problem like getting uh, or using this unique ability on all city-states on the map. Then, uh, that Fatoria, the unique tile improvement. It can be created in two ways. Either built by a worker or created by a now. A Fatoria can be constructed by working owned lands or by now in city-state lands. Each gives a unique set of benefits. So when we build it 
by when it's built by a worker in our territory the tile gains production and gold adjacent coastal water and lake tiles gain gold and adjacent fishing boats gain production mm, production gold good stuff boosting tiles around it good stuff uh overall yeah i'll take it it's nothing crazy but uh, it's not bad either uh, the extra production is always useful, especially with the like the map settings that we are using. With all the sea tiles, we might be missing production. So uh, this is uh, basically exactly what we need. And then if it's created by now, it provides a copy of each luxury resource type owned by the city state. So it's very good. On, the, on mercantile city-states because mercantile city-states have always their like unique luxury like the uh, I don't know jewelry and uh, there are some porcelain these kind of luxuries plus they almost always have another copy so we want to get that there as soon as possible so we get like more unique luxuries quickly uh, it provides a copy of each luxury resource type owned by the city-state, but that copy cannot be traded. Well, sucks, but sure, I'll take it. If it was tradable, it would be insane. Trade rounds to the city-state generate bonus production and food based on your gold income from the trade route. So we want to get rich trade routes to get as much production and food from them. And this comes back to our unique ability uh, and to what I was talking about when I said we need to focus on the, the protection of our trade because it's not just what we are getting from our unique ability, it's also pro what, uh, about what we are getting from those Fatorias. Um, food based on your gold income from the trade route and your relationship with the city state. So it's not only about those trade routes being as rich as possible but we also want them from city states where we are ideally allies i'm not sure how much exactly we'll be getting but i guess if it's uh, a trade route with an ally it's gonna be pretty decent bonus in addition to these uh, to this to these bonuses, the Fateria provides a vision on its tile and all tiles within the radius of two and provides a 25% defense bonus. Can only be built by the Portuguese, can only be built on coast, cannot be built adjacent to any Fateria, cannot be built on top of resources. There are quite a few conditions, but we should be able to still uh, meet those conditions and get those Fateria's almost everywhere. It's possible that we'll get some city states where it'll be just one tile island. And it will be impossible to build the Fatoria anywhere. Uh, but I hope we won't get that uh, or too many of these city states on the map. Okay, that's that. And now we have University of Cumbria, which is a replacement for Oxford University. Compared to Oxford, this one doesn't require university in the city. So that's um, actually quite helpful. And uh, it gets a free university. So uh, it can be built much faster when you have to get the university first. It delays Oxford quite a bit. But here when we get a free university, it will give us like so much time to build other things. Not building university saves a lot of production. It gives a free scientist, same as Oxford. All universities gain plus three gold, just more money, 50 culture every time you research a technology. Sure, I'll take it. It's not much, but I'll take it. And it scales with era. Minus one unhappiness from illiteracy. All naval units gain edge of discovery, which if I remember correctly is um, that we are getting gold when we reveal uh, tiles. Uh, I will check it when we get into the game to confirm. Whenever a Fatoria is built in city-state territory, permanently gain plus one production and plus two gold in the city. It's not that much, but when you consider how many we are going to be building in city-state territories, in the end, this could be plus 20 production and plus 40 gold per turn. So it's uh, actually pretty damn good. Mm, contains slot for a great works of writing and nothing else. 
Okay, so yeah, we want to combine, or we want, yeah, we want to, like, take advantage from our power spike, or, it's, it's not military power spike as I usually is when I'm using this word, but we, word, but we get, like, economical power spike in medieval era. It's a huge boost once we reach a decent amount of fate areas and nows and trade routes and everything starts generating these small bonuses. They add up and then the, the final bonus is going to be huge. And the goal, as I said before, is going to be protecting that. Okay, uh, so now we finally are in the game. This is the first starting location. What I was uh, aiming for is one starting location with like mineable resource, another starting location with uh, like anything other than mineable resources, so camps, plantations, something like that, and third starting location with the sea luxuries. So this one, that's, that's the mineable resources. We have uh, copper and uh, gems. Uh, when I move a bit, you can see that there is also incense to the north, and when we move to the other side, you can see that there is nothing else to the south. Uh, here we have a question, or a decision. If we move one tile here, and uh, uh, then we could settle our capital somewhere in the northern part, and get one more city in the southern part of the island. Or if we just give this whole island to our capital, settle here, eventually our border would get the incense as well. And then settle other cities on other islands. This means we would have to get uh, the ability to embark as soon as possible so that we don't get stuck just with our capital. Mm. Oh, by the way, the plan, I think think is gonna be tradition into statecraft and then something. I was thinking about progress but I think I want to have my capital as strong as possible as uh, uh, like as fast as I can. So tradition statecraft might be better than progress statecraft. Progress statecraft is more for like land maps I think. Uh, what else? Oh we can still move. Really? Okay, let's move a little bit more. As you can see, there is nothing to the south. Um, but yeah, this is the first start. I'm not too afraid. Uh, I think we should have access to at least one or two more islands somewhere around us. Uh, so we should be able to settle some more cities quite soon. That's number one. Then number two... If I remember correctly, this is going to be a slightly larger island. Here uh, we have oranges. Uh, we also have silver. Uh, but I just had to take this start. It's really strong. I just like it. I don't know why, but I like a start where there is a lake. <clears throat> so which way did I move my units? This way. As you can see, the island is getting bigger. Here we have two more copies of Citrus. So with this, we are already pretty close to a monopoly. We can also create a canal. So we connect this lake uh, to the sea. Not sure if there is any reason to do that, but there is the option. Uh, I'm not sure where I would settle yet. I actually like this tile because then uh, the capital would be accessible only from one sea tile, making it much more like resistant to sea attacks or naval attacks. On the other side, we have gems, we have silver here. Um, hard to say how large this island exactly is, if we're going to have a neighbor or not. But as I said, I just like this star too much not to make it a part of the, uh, of the like, voting. Well, that's number two. But I also have to say that this star might be a bit too strong. 
because citrus as a starting luxury is just 31 1 is really really damn strong and then we have the third start this is the one where the main luxury should be a sea resource uh, I like this combination, I have to say. Crab with uh, truffles, it's a very unusual combination. Um, it's also... Let's have a look around. It seems to be quite a large island. Oh, with the neighbor. So that's another advantage when we have a city-state on the same island, because we can immediately start working on, on our uh, influence. Uh, should be very decent production, as you can see there are hills everywhere. Food shouldn't be a problem, we have enough sea tiles. Uh, the capital would be either here or here, well protected. If I moved one, two, three, I could move here, so if you've reached the copper. It's hard to say what's up here. Ideal probably would be if the island just ended here. Okay, so this is number three. Um, my favorite, I think, is this one because this is. There are so many, like types of terrain we have from a sea resource to hills desert mineable resource uh, then another another luxury where we need camps what we don't have are like tiles for farms but well there are three tiles where you can get farms and mostly we'll probably just get great people tile improvements so that shouldn't be a problem we are even starting on the river it seems is it Plains Hill River? Yeah, it is river. It's within two tiles of a mountain, so it has everything, but it's not completely broken. I think the second one with the citrus is stronger than the start. Uh, but as I said, this one, there's so many things around it that I just like it a little bit more. The first one, I think, would be the most challenging one and the most risky one because it's hard to say if we get access to more islands and how those islands are gonna look like so it's uncertain how many cities we'll be able to get and when okay so now i think you need everything or i mean you know everything that you need to know for your decision i'll be looking forward to your comments and you can expect the second episode in about 24 hours after this one is released uh, as usual, I hope that you like this episode, I hope that you like this, the idea for this series, and that you're gonna join me next time again. And until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.